I do have one interesting consequence of this scattering uh, analysis, though. If the moon was a polished stainless steel ball, the sun would glare off the moon in a very brilliant patch, unlike what it does. The sun illuminates the moon, and you see uh, a homogeneous reflection of the illuminated portion, because you're not getting this uh, reflective scattering like the ones we were analyzing in today's show. But if you did have like a polished steel ball, the reflection of the sun off the moon would be exactly like we analyzed. It would be equally bright no matter what angle you were coming off. This is not a trivial statement in the sense that it has consequences. At different portions of the month, we get different total brightness off the moon. When the moon is very thin, the total brightness off the moon is very small. But if the moon was a polished stainless steel ball, it would shine just as bright at any portion of the month because the intensity coming off it doesn't depend on the angle from which you look at it based on the calculation that I, I guess I didn't really do. Like I say, it's a topic I probably should never have gotten into in the first place. For next week, you've got the spherical pumpernickel. One inch slices of spherical pumpernickel have the same amount of crust. See if you can prove it. Let's do another song before we wrap it up, Neil. We should just mention that we're usually on Monday nights. Yeah. You people right. might be seeing us on a Thursday or Saturday, right. and we're happy. But uh, the solution is guaranteed to be shown a week Monday. You got a song, Marty? Don't make me sing another one. OK. So let's do this song that I like to do. Who's going to fill their shoes? Like the outlaw that walks through Jesse's dreams. 